Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Canberra Conversations and today we are talking about how to dress well even as you start to build a little bit of muscle and be somebody that trains and is well built. In order to do that we are joined by Manny De La Cruz from Well Built Style. Manny, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me Colin. As you can hear guys, some dulcet tones from the other side of the Atlantic. We're joined from Canada by Manny today and for those that haven't heard of you before or been lucky enough to follow this Twitter page of yours or your Instagram, Manny, can you give the listeners a little bit of a background? Yeah, for sure. So I started Well Built Style uh, about seven years ago and around, I think, 2013. Started really off as just a, a little blog website. Um, and I got interested in style a couple of years prior to that. I had, you know, got my first sort of real career or, or job. And I, I knew I wanted to, you know, upgrade my style at that time. And so I was building my own style and I learned a lot. And then I had my own challenges too, you know, being someone who's physically fit and active and just trying to find clothes that fit well and look good on a, on a more athletic body was a challenge. And so I started the site as a way to kind of, you know, help other guys that were kind of in the same boat. And I've been doing that for, you know, seven years and then I got more and more interested in uh, Twitter uh, about a couple of years ago really promoting uh, my content and sharing uh, some value uh, with uh, a bunch of readers that way and uh, kind of spun that off into a bit of a consulting um, part-time consulting uh, gig as well so I've been focusing a lot of my time on on Twitter as my main social media and really sharing content uh, with a bunch of readers. And uh, it's been fantastic uh, kind of journey over the last seven years and interested to see where it goes uh, in the future. That's fantastic. And I think from the, my initial discovery of you just a few weeks ago through another podcast on the, the Danny Miranda show, which was an excellent episode, I straight away resonated with so much of what you said, but equally the, met, the kind of general aim of your page with regards to Yes, you've built a little bit. You've built a little bit of muscle now. You're you're muscular. You've got an athletic, trained physique. It doesn't mean that you can get away with dressing terribly, but equally, it so actually means that we can get away with a little bit less as well when it comes yes, to yeah. to formal wear. So it's 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 a funny and a, a lot of listeners in, in the fitness space hate the term balance, and I do too. But there is a there is a balance to be struck between how we present ourselves. So there's so much that we can we can we can we can dive into in that respect and i guess that the first thing is you mentioned that this sits as a, a side project that you're incredibly passionate about how do you find the time to over the years to to build such a a strong platform seven years now going strong alongside your your full-time gig i mean a lot of the listeners will know that this is a, a side hustle for me as well so i think a lot of people will be interested in how you build it into your day yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is, I, I mean, I'm, you know, it's something that I really do enjoy and I really do love and so I have a passion for it. And, and I mean, that's, you know, probably what's kept me going over the years, but I think it's just a little consistency, you know, I'm not doing, you know, especially when I first started out, it was just, a, you know, maybe I'll write a post a week kind of thing and squeeze it in between. Um, you know, when I'm working and, and that sort of stuff. And on the weekends, you know, do a little bit here and there. And that consistency builds and it becomes a habit, right? And for me, I think it's, it's been so ingrained doing this over so many years that it's just become a part of my life, sharing this aspect of, of what I like and enjoy. So I think it's, it's really just about integrating it into um, your lifestyle because, you know, people have different goals and aspirations and different interests and you, you got to kind of figure out how you're going to fit that in there and uh for me it's just about being consistent even if you're just doing a little bit here and there right i mean you got your 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 main your main gig or your main job that's going to be your main focus but it's taking that a little bit of extra time in the evening maybe just an hour right like just yeah. an hour to to write a blog post or you know do something on instagram or where, whatever platform it might not even be like on the internet, it could be something else, right? And just taking a little bit of that time back and, and investing it into a, another interest of yours, I, I think it'll, it'll compound over time. And that's kind of how it's worked uh, and played out for me. There's a few different phrases you used in that 
um, monologue there, Manny, that really resonate with a lot of the listeners. And the first of those, and the last one of the last things you said was compounding. And it's those small efforts over time that add up. We talk a lot about finance in the podcast. We've spoken about the wonders of compound interest when it comes to investing. But when it comes mm-hmm. to efforts, like you say, those small, consistent efforts that you've invested over the years and those little daily actions you've taken to build up what is now a really credible website and resource for people who want to dress better as, a, as an athletic trained guy, it's all added up, but it didn't happen. Yes. It didn't happen because you had a burst of inspiration for a couple of weeks during 2013. I mean, that might have started you, but it didn't, yeah. it didn't keep you going. And I guess the other thing you said is habits. Atomic Habits is one of the books that a lot of the listeners have uh, read off the back of some of the podcasts yeah. that we've had. And James Clear is a is is an incredible author as well as um, creator. And I think he actually follows your Instagram man. If you didn't know that, yes, um, yeah, I know him very well. He's a good guy. Yeah, um, we're, we're, we're you're you're amongst friends here then in terms of James Clear fans um, and. When you speak about habits, like you say, your habit after work for an hour is to maybe write a blog or to post on Instagram or share content or engage in content. Maybe somebody else's habit is to watch an hour of Netflix. You've just chosen to invest your energy and create a habit which is moving you closer towards perhaps where you want to be. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's the big key for me. I mean, you know, I'll be honest, like I don't really watch television anymore like I just don't really have the time because I have other interests that are filling that those those time blocks for me and you know and you don't have to be as extreme as myself you know I'm busy I'm married I have a kid as well and I have all these other things going on in my life but you know you got to look and maybe just even audit your week right write down what you're doing every day just chunk out your hours and just see where you're losing time because, you know, I know I was losing time, you know, just mindlessly browsing the internet or, you know, I'd watch maybe a couple hours of television every night or something like that. You can get that time back, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to turn into like the super efficient every hour, every minute of your day is just towards, you know, your goals and that's it. And you have no time for anything else. It's, you know, let's just say you take 50% of that time yeah. that is, you know, dead time. You're just scrolling around the internet or you're doing really nothing. If you just take even 50% of that time and, and invest it towards, I don't know, you want to reshape your body or you want to, you know, take a course that might improve your career or start a business or whatever the case is, even if you just take 50% of that time that's going to make a big change for you over maybe not a week or two weeks or a month or two months, but over six months, a year, two years, three years, five years, it's going to make a huge difference in, uh, in your life and, uh, in your goals. Yeah. That message, something that speaks massively to me and I'm sure many of the people listening will hit that, will feel that as well, because like you say, it's, it's that allocation and direction of how you spend your time being purposeful towards something that you care about. And I guess one of the other strands of what you were speaking about was your enjoyment from writing and creating content. And I certainly found that as I was creating fitness content primarily on Instagram, when I started the Instagram page, it was nice to have an outlet about writing from something apart from insurance and the, and the and <laughs> yeah. corp, corp, corporate risk management. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy that. Otherwise I still wouldn't be in there, but having an outlet to write about something else and sharing it with people, even if it hadn't got thousands of followers, which it has ended up with, I enjoyed the process of sharing that. And I think you can see from your content and the fact that you're so consistent over this period of time, that the level of enjoyment is a big factor in, in you producing that, I suppose. Totally. It is. I mean, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. Right. At, uh, and I can't, and, I, and I'll be honest, it's not like every day I'm like super fired up to write this blog post or whatever it is. There's, there's days where you're like, Oh, you know, I'd rather do something else, but I know it's important enough to me that I'm going to do it. And the satisfaction I get from, you know, completing whatever it is that I'm doing, whatever project I'm on, I feel so good that um, that's another aspect that kind of keeps me going too, right? Is, is seeing myself, you know, make that progress, right? And, 
yeah. and kind of tick the boxes and say, oh, wow, okay, I've done this, I've done that. And that there, just looking back and seeing your progress in that, pers- from that perspective, that, that itself gives me more fuel too to keep, keep going as well. So yeah, uh, that- there's, there's different levels kind of all mixed in there, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different levels to that, like you say, Manny. And I think one of those is that is that reward feedback that you're seeking that kind of loop of, I complete this habit, I do the, for example, turning up on the days when you don't want to and producing the, the blog out of habit because on Tuesdays, I always write a blog. And yeah. knowing that later down the line that you're rewarded because there'll be days when you turn up and you're like, I want to write two or three posts or I've got some brilliant ideas I want to share. Whereas the days when you don't maybe feel it and you still do it, that's incredibly important because we've just spoken about compound interest. You get the reward of knowing that you're a man of your word and you're following up on things that are important to you. So I think there's, there's lots within that section, even if people aren't interested in being content creators and filling, fitting that in within their uh, full-time occupation alongside that, we're talking to you about where you can direct your energy and it's clear that Manny's directed it into a place that's fulfilled him but also led to maybe an additional revenue stream and a level of Mm -hmm. enjoyment as well for sure totally so let's dive right into the the kind of the the nuts and bolts of the topic I suppose when it comes to how men who are well built should style themselves what are the most common mistakes that you see from guys and i'm sure i can share a few that uh, (laughs) probably made myself as well Uh, yeah so yeah it's interesting i mean there's you know a few big you know kind of more common mistakes that i think about uh the first believe it or not is is wearing oversized clothes even even as someone who is you know in shape and fit um there's still a tendency for guys, maybe it's, it's a more of a, a common trend here in North America than, than it is in Europe. For, um, but it, it's a trend nonetheless. And, and it's for guys to wear stuff that's one or two sizes too big. And, you know, for myself, you know, being someone who's more athletically built, you know, I, it took me a while to realize that I'm actually not a size large uh, in the U S for, for most stuff. I'm, I'm a medium, even though I'm, you know, six feet tall, 185 pounds and, and, and sort of an athletic muscular build, you would think, Oh, no, I'm a big guy. I, I can wear large, you know, I should be wearing large coats and jackets and so forth. But it, it, here it's just not the case. It's, you know, I, I'm a medium. It looks better on me. It's more fitted. It gives me a better aesthetic. It gives me better lines, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's one of the big issues I see with, with, you know, guys that are fit is just wearing stuff that's a little bit too baggy. And that's just a, an issue I see with guys in general. Uh, some other issues I see is guys kind of defaulting to a lot of their, I guess their athleisure or gym wear for their everyday kind of casual looks. Yep. Um, you see that a lot. So guys are wearing their Under Armour hoodies with their jeans, you know, or their tr- gym trainers out with their jeans as like a casual look. And it's just their gym style starts to really creep into their style in general, you know, if, what, whatever, regardless of what they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not trying to knock athleisure looks. There's a good way to do athleisure looks. But uh, what I'm talking about specifically here is actually wearing functional training gear with like, you know, your jeans or your chinos or, or what have you and, and trying to pull that off as like a casual look. It just, it doesn't work. And I, and I see that a lot as well. Yeah. And then, on yeah. The, and then, I, on the sorry, first, go ahead. Sorry, Manny. On, on, on the first point around oversized, I think you're right. I think, I don't think it's as much of a trend in Europe. However, for the kind of semi bodybuilding style crowd, there is quite a trend towards oversized t-shirts. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we have a, we have a style, it's probably got a different term, maybe in the States, long line. So very much that kind of yes. um, fitted on the arms, but very long on, on the body. In fact, in, in yes. America, one of the big kind of fitness influencers, Christian Guzman is a big advocate of that kind of long line look with his company, Alphalete. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm 5'10", and I'm by no means really short. Yeah. But if I wear a long line and it's oversized, I look like I've maybe never lifted weight in my life. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's not right for your proportions, right? It's not giving you the, the, the correct look for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's quite common as well um, to kind of see that. Oh, I, although sometimes it can, it can look okay in a taller guy, that kind of oversized T hanging off, not hanging off the shoulders, but over the shoulders, looser on the body with kind of maybe tighter 
um, jeans or trousers, which looks a bit more aesthetic when you're a bit taller. But I think yep. when you're six foot and under and well built with kind of a V taper, you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice with a kind of looser, like really loose looking t-shirt that isn't or hoodie that isn't fitted to the to your shape for sure and i agree and and i think it is there are differences you know on average i mean in europe guys do tend to dress a little bit better than your average american which is you know more or less a nightmare and so (laughs) there's differences there and i mean you know and i'm being honest about it uh and i think the other issue and we kind of i think touched on it a little bit um, prior to, to, to jumping online here is, is wearing stuff that's a little too fashionable, a little too trendy. Like you know, if you're in shape, that's your biggest asset right there, your physique. And you really don't need a, you know, quote unquote dress up in order to really look good. You know, you could a fitted plain t-shirt and really good quality jeans, maybe some boots, something like that. You're going to look better than basically, you know, any out of shape business exec wearing his $2,000 suit, you know, like it's that the fact that you're already in really good shape is probably the number one kind of factor in, in your look. And you don't really need to go, you know, overboard with the fashionable P the big printed graphic tees or the luxury branded stuff. You, you don't really need to go down that route. Um, you can simplify things go a little more understated and uh and pull off a great look that way i think that makes so much sense from what you sometimes see where when you are in in better shape like you say your physique is very much a status symbol already and you don't necessarily need to overdo everything around it so sometimes you can wear a plain t-shirt that's well fitted and more people will be like oh it's a great t-shirt whereas if your friend was wearing that who's two stone overweight and 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 got a, a kind of soft body yeah no no nobody would bat an eyelid at the fact the t-shirt was uh maybe had had a had a small pony on it and, and that's, yeah exactly or, or 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 the other way like you say that those kind of really loud in your face graphic t-shirts mm-hmm. there's not as much need to have that when you've got maybe a bicep vein and some good forearms. There's a lot. There's totally. A, there's a lot. Vascular, hey, vascularity is the menswear accessory, you know, for the fit man. And so I, yeah, totally on board with that. And uh, it, it just going understated, letting the physique do the heavy lifting, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> for your look is, is the way to go, right? Of course. You, you mentioned about the athletic wear creeping into the casual look. I don't think that's as common um, for guys of our age in the in, in Europe and the UK. Um, I do think there is a tendency to walk around in all gym wear. So yeah. um, head to toe in, in, your, in your gym kit at all times. And don't get me wrong, <laughs> during this COVID period, I've probably been more guilty of that just based from working at home all the time. You kinda yeah. need, you're a bit more comfortable in, in sweats or joggers and, and, and a hoodie. But I certainly think, like you say, when that starts to creep into your style overall, you're almost going too much the the other way in terms of like we've said guys with great physiques can dress quite casual, but there's like a yeah. level of casual. It's like t-shirt and jeans, decent enough shoes, and yes. you're, you're in a good spot. Whereas walking around in your Under Armour full full kit at all times is, is yeah, not, it's a little too casual. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it, exactly that. Are there any other mistakes that that guys that lift tend to make? I guess uh, talking about I, I trendy. Think, yeah, those are the big stu- big ones. I mean, you can also say with fit, it's you know, especially when guys are first starting out and learning how to improve their style and this is an issue i had was going a little too slim fitting uh you know when i was first starting getting it getting into style the slim ties and the slim lapels on your on your jackets all that was kind of the rage it just for certain physiques but really muscular physiques it's not something that's going to work too well it's just not going to uh you know balance out with with your proportions uh thankfully that sort of trend is kind of gone by the wayside a little bit these days but that's the other issue is is being mindful of just the fit of the of the actual clothing that you're wearing you're going to have more challenges in that regard and uh, that's where things like a good tailor uh, will come in handy 
Yeah, I think we're speaking about suits there, aren't we, with regards to the thin lapels yeah. and thin ties. I, I've certainly seen that trend, and I think, like you say, thankfully, it's going a little bit out of style. But when you're a more well-built guy, and I saw one of the examples you gave on your website is, is, is Will Smith, um, when it came yeah. to him, him and his suit, to look powerful with his kind of strong, wide upper body, wearing a thin lapel suit or a, a skinny tie just doesn't look right. It just looks... Um, like it, it kind of brings his proportions out of shape. Whereas when he's got that kind of wider breast um, uh, kind of wider lapels, wider collar, thicker knotted tie, he just looks a lot more masculine, I suppose, and a lot more powerful, which fits yes, yeah. how he's built as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, the skinny lapels and the skinny tie on a big muscular, it looks like you're wearing like a suit out of the junior section or something, right? Like it's an <laughs> undersized suit. It just doesn't fit it. Right. So uh, going with more of a traditional width on the lapel or a little bit wider and same with the ties and stuff, it's, it's more in proportion, more in line with how your physique is built and it'll just look more flattering on, on you. You mentioned that you've probably started to get into this, space in terms of understanding your style and wanting to be more focused on it as a as somebody who just kind of started their first and we'll call it real job in terms of um maybe dressing for work was that a suit based job where you had to turn up in, in a suit it was more business casual so it wasn't a yeah. suit environment but you definitely you know you wanted to wear you know nicer trousers or collared shirt uh, you know dress shoes that sort of thing so kind of like your standard business casual environment and that's what kind of you know, led to me, led me into, into improving my style is, was wanting to, to really put together a more polished look from what I was actually seeing in, in the, in the workplace. Interestingly, you've said around how trends have changed over the years, like you say, so for example, four or five years ago, maybe a lot of people that were going to a wedding or uh, a formal event would have been like, oh, skinny ties are cool, but now thankfully that's gone out of fashion you've mentioned other trends that maybe guys who left can't take part in as much such as kind of skinnier stuff and i certainly know there's yeah. certain pairs of jeans that i just can't wear because it'll look like i'm wearing leggings and then yeah but then there's other times that i don't want to wear like i certainly can't get away with boot cut because i don't like my my ankles kind of being yeah by the by, <laughs> by, by by the jeans what's your kind of approach to, to trousers firstly for jeans but then secondly for suits i'd be interested to hear as well yeah so first you know what with with trousers i have a different fit for the different type of trousers i wear so for like a jean i just like a nice slim fitted jean with a slight taper in the leg opening not a skinny jean which is you know a really extreme taper that's like pasted to your calves there's got to be a little bit of room there for me and it, it'll give you a nice slim cut that just really looks quite classic and i always recommend guys have a nice pair of dark you know if you can get raw salvage denim jeans that's you know really the kind of the the best those are great and that's kind of for jeans my look is to go with that slim uh sort of cut with chinos it's very similar maybe a little bit more of a taper with my chinos just because the last thing I want is to give that because chinos khaki chinos have just you know they're in menswear you just kind of they're synonymous with kind of like your typical office wear baggy and, and so you don't want to give that vibe off I like a slim fit on those with my trousers I'm more uh, inclined to go a little bit classic with that uh, with, you know, even the break on my trousers, I, you know, I know a lot of guys are into the super, no extreme, no break. You're showing a lot of ankle, your socks, that sort of look. Yeah. But I actually like more of a slight break over the shoe, a little bit more classic that way. Cause if you're going to spend some money on a really good suit, which I recommend, you want to really focus on a more of a classic aesthetic with that suit, because you know, if you're going to spend a thousand, two thousand dollars on a suit, you want to be at least, you know, wear it for at least ten years. Yeah. And so, if you stick with more of a classic cut and and fit, and with the detailing, you're going to get a lot more longevity uh, out of that suit versus a super trendy suit with like the you know super no break uh, trousers, right? So that's that's kind of how I I do it for myself personally. But really, with when it when it comes to the fit of of your trousers it really depends on the style of trousers of course your physique and then 
what you personally like, right? I mean, some guys really do like the skinny jean look, especially the younger guys out there with their street inspired looks. It'll work really well. Some guys with more of a rugged aesthetic, they like a little bit more of a straight fit on their jeans because they like to wear boots and that sort of thing. So it, it, it also does, does depend on, on the actual personal aesthetic uh, as well. I like that message. And I think one of the things that we, you were almost alluding to there was it depends sometimes what shoes you're wearing with the trousers as well. Because like you say, yes. if you're wearing boots, you're not going to wear skinny jeans that are like taped yeah. to your ankle. Like I've maybe worn my kind of skinniest jeans where I'm wearing like a, uh, an ultra boost or a kind of more trainery vibe or mm-hmm. maybe like, maybe like a, a, a kind of driving loafer sometimes depending on like yeah. what, what, what i'm going for but as i've got older and you mentioned that they're around younger younger listeners will be much more inclined to have that kind of skinny look because it does look more youthful it looks more um yeah i think youthful will probably be the best term whereas i think as you're a little bit older maybe a little bit more rugged or mature yes you probably yeah. want to transfer a little bit more away and have that kind of slim cut where it yeah. sits it sits it sits nicely it doesn't it doesn't break over the shoes as it does for a suit or a, or a, yeah. or a formal trouser but you certainly move towards that. And I like your comment around chinos as well, because I think here, if people are thinking chinos, sometimes they're thinking like going to the golf course with it overlapping over your big white golf shoe. And yeah. <laughs> that's not what you're going for at all. You're, you're yeah. going for something that's a little bit more, um, I, I don't want to say trendy or fashionable, but a little bit more clean cut when it comes to yeah. like that kind of um, sitting just, just above the ankle rather than, over 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 the shoe so yeah what what's what's to unpack there and i think i've certainly followed your logic when it comes to the suits as well because i don't think in a in a corporate environment primarily and most functions you would i don't i'm not a huge fan of the look where the suit is short of the ankle i think that's here today and but it should hopefully be gone tomorrow yeah yeah for sure i mean it's it's again it's trends right you see that you know you know come and go right and now you're actually starting to see you know, used to be don't wear pleated che- like don't wear pleated you know suit trousers right like you want flat front suit trousers and now you're starting to see pleats come back and for especially for guys that are in really good shape they got big massive glutes and quads and that sort of thing a pl- like one or two pleats is actually almost necessary for, yeah. for a suit trouser it'll actually drape way better you won't get this pocket flaring going on and some other issues with the, with the with the trouser and so even having one pleat and still keeping the trousers, you know, trim and, and slim in their cut, it's going to look uh, really nice on a, on a person that's uh, has more of an athletic build. I think so. And so many guys will be screaming into their AirPods just now to say, what about suit trousers? You've mentioned they should sit over your, um, over your shoe, but I just can't get them to fit my, my quads and my glutes. I, I guess I'll share my approach. And you mentioned the tailor already, Manny, but I'd yeah. be really keen to hear you as well. Um, in terms of what you recommend yeah i for that especially with suit trousers um myself i got to go made to measure custom uh you know the other thing you can do with those is make sure you know size up in the waist a little bit because if you size up in the waist proportionally there'll be more room in the legs in the quads and in the glutes so you'll probably get a better fit there and then what you'll want to do is go to a tailor and have them bring in the waist because you'll have a trimmer waist and that should give you a better better look and you'll have less of an issue with uh you know that tight uh constricting fabric around your uh, around your quads but personally myself i've with my suit trousers i go bespoke or made to measure and that way i can actually get a fit that's perfect for for my proportions because i do have bigger legs and a smaller waist and uh, i've found it very much a challenge to be able to walk into a store and grab something off the rack, especially with suit trousers or something like that, or a nicer, nicer pair of uh, trousers and be able to put them on and just walk out the store and be like, Hey, these are perfect. It's, it's always, I got to size up a little, they go to the tailor, bring them in. And I, I know it's a little bit of work, but that little bit of work pays off in terms of the overall look uh, that you'll get with those, with those trousers or with any garment. This is exactly where my head's at, Manny, and I'm glad you, you, uh, you've maybe reinforced my, my approach. I, I'm not made to measure yet. Obviously, I'll hopefully hit my bonus this year and we can get involved in that. But, uh, <laughs> but I think when it comes to buying suits for the last 
three or four years since my legs have seen the kind of most significant development. I can't buy off the rack suits. I have to go for the waist size up. So I'm, I'm a, I may be a 28 or 30 waist. I've got an absolutely tiny yeah. waist. Um, yeah. And I'll have to either get a 32. And then, like I say, I've got a pretty decent tailor in Glasgow who will bring the, bring the waist in and they can sometimes bring the seam in as well to make sure it kind of sits right. Yes. But I've got so much more room in the quads. I don't think I'm going to burst them every time I put something in my pocket yes. or, I bend, or I bend down to pick up a pen. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable, but also because they are still in a kind of a slim fit or a straight fit um, uh, trouser, it still sits nicely along the west of my leg. And effectively, I've just modified it. And it's a small price to pay to tailor to make you exactly. still have a suit that fits you. Because if you maybe went into a more classic fit or a more kind of relaxed fit suit, you get that kind of wider finish at the bottom that you see. Yeah. Like, 40, 50, 60 year old and you're all <laughs> yeah it's not totally, what yeah. you guys are after at all exactly yeah I guess one of the other things we mentioned around trends and styles is the the kind of likelihood that guys that lift can't fall quite to the letter like you said we can't maybe go quite as skinny we can't go quite as extreme is there any other areas that we can't go as extreme I know you've spoken on your on your website about maybe white shoes as well Sorry, uh, with sorry the white shoes. Yeah, so you spoke about wearing a pair of kind of white trainers on the on on the site. Do you, can is there an element of people that can get away with that and can't get away with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, with trainers there, I mean, again, it depends on the style of trainer you're you're actually you know considering versus you know you can have a really nice. I think basically any guy can wear a really nice low top leather you know leather lined full grain leather sneaker similar to like a common projects type sneaker that type of sneaker is very classic that's something most guys can pull off for a variety of different looks it doesn't have to be just your you know street type looks it could be a smart clean casual look with some chinos you can even wear uh, a shoe like that Uh, it's a little bit more fashionable a little bit more trendy right now with like some nice suit trousers as well so when it comes to that, I, you know, most guys can wear that. Um, you know, the only issue I would have with something like that is, is considering maybe, maybe age would play into it a little bit more of a mature man might not want to wear something like that. And I always, you know, when I talk to readers or clients or, or what have you that are a little bit more mature, you know, I always offer, you know, a light gray option as an alternative to something like that of a, uh, to a, a classic white sneaker but something like a low top uh, white sneaker full grain leather that style is something any guy can pull off more or less that's uh, that's a classic look for sure yeah it's fairly timeless and i did like the example you gave in your site where it was jeans shorts chinos that kind of gray suit trouser with the with 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 the white the white the white wool uh, wool top trainer is really fashionable at the moment as yes. well as you said, and it's quite a clean look for formal, but also kind of you kind of also showing that you're not dressing up to the nines or dressing up um to 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 over the top for an event like that. And I yes. think it cycles back to that point around guys that have excellent physiques can turn up looking like that and still look respectful and well dressed. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. One of the other areas I've I probably enjoyed reading and hearing you speak about the most is the concept of how ugly men can become handsome. And on reflection, <laughs> that that must have been the the kind of most rap that I've been in a podcast for for a ten minute spell for a long, long time. It definitely <laughs> it, it 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 definitely hit me, and I'm sure it'll hit hit the listeners. Where does this concept come from, and can you share it a little bit with us? Yeah, I think it's, I think it just comes from my person. It comes from my personal life, really. I mean, you know, any guy will, will probably nod along when I say this. I mean, we all know of guys that are conventionally not very good looking people in the face, uh, but the way they carry themselves or demeanor, their attitude, the confidence, uh, you know, the way they dress, uh, the way they speak. All those things are giving us strong signals that this is a good looking guy and, 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 you know, other people react in a similar fashion. And so it's from my personal life. I I know guys that kind of fit that mold and, you know, and I started talking about it on Twitter and I ended up writing a little article, I think on it as well. And it really resonated with the, the readership 
And really it comes down to, you know, just a handful of points, right? Like, you know, get yourself in really good shape, right? You know, get that physique on point, your basic hygiene and grooming, very simple stuff. I'm not telling guys to go and get mani manicures or pedicures or all that kind of stuff. Just your basic hygiene, you know, get your style, upgrade that style, get a style that works for you and your personality and your aesthetic. And then it's the attitude, right? Uh, there really is a, such a thing as a handsome man's demeanor, you know, they're, you know, emotionally cool, non-reactive, they're calm, they're confident people, they're positive, uh, you know, they're, they're aggressive in a, in an action oriented sort of way, and they're ambitious as well, right? So those factors are, are what really, I think, make a guy, quote unquote, handsome. Uh, it's not necessarily that you're actually born with the movie star looks right like the brad pitts and the george clooney's um i mean even in movies you'll know guys that are conventionally are not very good looking guys but because they have all these other factors working in their favor they you know they become good looking and i think you know someone like daniel craig is a good example i mean you look at some of his older movie older movies he's not a he's not really a very you know good looking striking guy but yeah. as soon as he landed that bond role he transformed himself, uh, not just the physique, but just the style, the, you know, the, the grooming, all that stuff. And he really became like a, a leading man once he, once he started in those movies. But prior to that, he wasn't really much of anything. And there's lots of examples that we can probably run through, but that's kind of in a nutshell, um, uh, that whole ugly, handsome thing that I've been talking about for a little while now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the concept and I can certainly see where it comes from, like you say, you don't, maybe you're not born with the most kind of most symmetrical, aesthetic, um, facially striking um, features. And Daniel Craig's perhaps a good example. Obviously, now the listeners will find it quite hard to view him as anything other than this really handsome, striking actor who was James Bond. But I think you're absolutely right. A lot of where his attraction and handsomeness comes from, like you say, is clean cut style. So he's got a clean haircut. He's, he's well kept and well groomed. He is extremely confident and he speaks and delivers himself um, in a way that he shows self-assurance, which radiates. And then, like you said, he's well-dressed. I think one of the photos on your site is him in a, a kind of casual blue polo shirt and some kind of um, cream or white chinos. And he just looks very fashionable, but it's extremely yeah. plain, simple clothing. It's nothing yeah. extravagant. It's not complex, but yeah. he does it so well that, he comes across as extremely handsome and likely attractive to, to, uh, to, 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 to the fairer sex, which is obviously what a lot of us would deem how handsome somebody is. And I guess that's yes. where, where I think many people can think of examples of people who maybe are in their friendship circle or they went to school with, university, college, or work with, who are deemed very attractive by females, but you maybe see their face and you think, oh, well, I don't think he's actually that good looking, but he ticks these other boxes with respect to style grooming and he's got maybe a clean haircut or maybe a well-formed um, bit of facial hair. And he just eludes confidence, which makes him in that, that arena as a handsome man, Manny. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Quite funny. And I guess one of the things I mentioned there was around facial hair. What role do you think that plays nowadays? Cause it's so fashionable to have. A, it is. Have a yeah. I, I mean, it can really, I mean, I've actually written an article on this as well. I mean, it it's, can be a, a, a dynamic. It could be a very important thing for a lot of guys because, I mean, not only is it a secondary sexual characteristic for a reason, you know, it's very a masculine, very masculine look, but it can also strengthen your jawline, strengthen your, your chin, fill that out. Uh, if you're, let's say you're losing your hair and you're bald, um, you know, it'll add some more contrast to your face. So your face doesn't just blend into your head kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, then it, it can also be used as a, as a sort of an accessory. You see guys with the clean cut suits and the refined looks, and then they have this beard that's kind of more rugged. So you got that balance and the interplay between those two as, uh, aesthetics as well. So they've just, uh, over the last 10 years, they've, they've really come back and, uh, it looks like they're going to probably stay for a little while anyways. And um, if you're a guy who can actually grow a beard, you're fortunate enough with genetics that can 
can produce a nice beard, it's, it's worth experimenting with. And it might not be a full, big, thick, bushy beard. It might just be a, something like a five o'clock shadow or a little bit of stubble just to give some definition to your face and give a little bit of contrast. Uh, it's, it's worth experimenting with for sure. Certainly. And I think it plays a role in that handsome piece when it comes to uh, that self-assured piece as a, as a kind of masculine man, having that mm-hmm. um, element of a stronger looking jaw, that contrast with maybe if you, if you do have a, a, a bald head as well, then there's, there's, a, there's a lot within that. But equally, like you say, it's that kind of shadow in the face as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be the full bone beard. I certainly know I would be up, um, up shit Creek without a paddle if it was to be <laughs> a, 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 a full beard. But I certainly know that my jaw looks, um, more prominent and I perhaps look older and um, which is yes. obviously a thing in the corporate environment as a as a young executive I want to look mature and able to speak to and I've got I've got quite a baby baby face so I, <laughs> I like to I like to make sure that I've maybe got a little bit of uh, shadow and stubble and equally massive cost saving over time on uh, on razors as well. Oh, totally yeah that's t- yeah cost savings and time savings right in the mornings and stuff so yeah absolutely yeah, we don't have to maintain it quite as much, which is which is helpful. I think that's been a hugely helpful conversation, Manny. One of the kind of final areas I wanted to delve into was just your mindset on self-improvement. As somebody that is very invested in building a good physique, but also looking well and sty- well-styled, you are clearly somebody that's focused in that area alongside having a, a platform that you've built up over the years and that kind of really prominent side hustle that you clearly care about. And I imagine within that self-improvement and self-development has played a role. And ultimately that's what a lot of people listen to this podcast for ways that they can build themselves up and, and, and be the best version of themselves. What has been a key factor in that for you? Um, you know, for me, I just think back to a, a quote that I had shared and I can't even really remember where I came across it, but kind of a formula, the way I think about it is you, know, you look good in order to feel good. And when you feel good, you can produce good results. And that's kind of the way I think about this whole, you know, aesthetic style, fitness kind of game. It's, it's not, you know, people go, what's the point of, you know, looking good? Like, what's the end goal here? And to me, it's about leverage, right? You have other ambitions, other goals that are more important than just looking good. And you're using that tool to help you obtain some other other goals and ambitions that you have in your life. And just the knock-on effects of improving your style and your fitness, the way you feel about yourself, it's, you know, you can't underestimate that because that's kind of where you can draw upon a lot of confidence uh, in yourself and, you know, your self-esteem in order to go and and meet those challenges uh, in the world, right? So, uh, for me, that's the way I, I think about it is, is it's okay to have a little bit of pride in the way you look. Um, it'll improve your mindset and it'll help you uh, go on and tackle some of those uh, other big challenges that you have in your life. That resonates really strongly. And I think where you caveat it with, yes, it's important to look good. And it's not necessarily shallow to place a lot of importance in how you feel and project yourself on looking good and, and being well styled and, well, and having a developed physique because it's all about the processes that you put into that in terms of your commitment to your training, your commitment to your diet, your commitment to choosing the right, the right clothes and the right styles is all healthy. It's not coming from a place of oh, I'm not worthy if I'm not in good shape. It's a case of I'm feeling myself to be the best version of me. And many people that are listening to this are fitness fanatics and very interested in their appearance they will resonate with that idea that in order to be my best self, I have to tick some other boxes that maybe mean that I'm my best mental self rather than it coming yes. from an unhealthy place. Yes, for sure. And I think, you know, I totally agree with that. It's, you know, it's, it's a form of self-love really, you know, that, you know, let's put it this way. When someone is depressed, what's the first thing that you notice about them? Well, their appearance is disheveled, right? They don't have the motivation to, you know, shower and take care of themselves. So, you know, the militaries of the world know that appearance and your comportment, that is very important because it instills that, that sense of pride and discipline in yourself. Right. And, uh, you know, you know, taking the extra time to, um, you know, improve your style and your grooming and these sorts of things, it's a form of self care. Right. And, and that's, what's going to help you and, and carry you 
um, as you move on in your life and, and you go on and tackle other, other projects and goals and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent term to use, self-care, because I think some people think self-care means sitting on the sofa with the dominoes, watching Netflix, <laughs> yeah. Netflix back to back. And that's yeah. maybe a form of self-care in terms of pacifying things that are going on in your head. But maybe the best form of self-care is making yourself uh, a more valuable asset to your, your family, your friends, or your, your employer, but also making yourself more comfortable in, in who you are, Manny. And that certainly speaks to me. I guess the, the other thing within that conversation would be, were there any particular sources that really resonated with you over the years to help you develop this mindset? Um, you know, I, I, there's so many books I've read uh, over the years that, uh, you know, that have had a huge impact on me. And, you know, one book that I always seem to recommend the most or uh, tell people to read is, is Watch My Back by Jeff Thompson. It's a fantastic book and I highly recommend, uh, you know, you read it. Uh, the story in it is incredible. Uh, this guy basically, you know, he's in his mid twenties and he is, you know, depressed and his life is in shambles. Uh, he's living with a lot of fear in his life. And, um, he, he basically resolves to, to take those fears head on and, 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 uh, conquer them one by one. And I think one of his biggest fears was physical confrontation. He ends up anyways, he ends up becoming like a bouncer, in one of the most dangerous cities, I think at that time in the UK for like yeah. 10 years, and he ends up writing this book and becomes a BAFTA winning um, filmmaker, all this amazing stuff happens to him, but he starts from very, very humble beginnings and you see his mindset grow and change. And he gives a lot of really detailed advice in the book on how he handled a lot of the, uh, the emotions and, and things that he was going through uh, uh, throughout his whole journey. So I highly recommend grabbing that book because it had a huge impact on me when I read it. Like, I think I was maybe in my mid twenties or something like that. Huge impact on me. And, and I really, you know, it's a book that I turn to uh, quite a bit and I, you know, I'll, I'll read certain passages out of it or he's written a bunch of other books that, which I've, I've read as well, but that one in particular really resonated with me and I recommend guys um, check that one out for sure. I love when somebody comes on and recommends something that I've not read before myself, because from a yeah. selfish perspective, I'll, I'll like to dive into that. And I think nothing gives it a stronger endorsement than the fact that you've gone on to reread it at times and delve back into it, but also read other books by the author as well. And yes, I like that you say, obviously, <laughs> sometimes it's not always helpful when somebody's uh, when we ourselves haven't experienced that level of struggle, maybe the kind of shambles his life was, but equally it's motivational. It gives us perspective that somebody has gone from that to where they are now, but also the, maybe the steps that they took because we can scale that to maybe the size of our own problems and the challenges we face. So my challenge might not be the level of challenge that Jeff Thompson faced in his mid twenties, but I can certainly apply his mindset and his approach to betterment to maybe the smaller scale challenges that I've encountered that are big for me, but small compared to, to him. And I really like that message, Manny. Absolutely. And I'm on the, I'm on the same page with that. I think that's what I, you know, take as inspiration from that book is, you know, he came from very humble beginnings. He had a lot of challenges and look how far he was able to go. Um, you know, I don't have necessarily the same amount of challenges in my life, but if I can even just, you know, take 10% or 20% of what he's done there and apply that to my life. I mean, who knows where I'll go, right? Because I've got certain advantages that he didn't have. And that's the kind of inspiration I, I take from books like that. And that one in particular is, you know, there's people out there that are, are in, you know, very tough, you know, situations and, uh, you know, they're, they're able to, to get themselves out of that. Uh, and it's an incredibly inspiring and, and it gives you perspective on your own life as well and, and the challenges that you face. That's such a key term you've used their perspective. And that's one of the reasons that one of my favorite books is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And it's the same idea of what he faced was so terrible. And likewise, Jeff's experience would be worse than the vast majority of people who are fortunate enough to be able to listen to a, to, to, to a podcast on Apple or Spotify and, and kind of move themselves forward. So we can certainly learn from these people and i'll be sure to link that one in the show notes as a as as an amazon book and i guess one of the other reasons that i guess that story is resonating with what we're discussing today manny is that you're somebody that is 
completely relatable and, and quote unquote normal. You've got a wife and kids, you're into your fitness, you have a full-time job, but you're creating content, but you're somebody who has used important sources and built fantastic habits to put himself in a position where he has this fantastic side hustle, which he's passionate about, but also is a, is a kind of a side stream of enjoyment and, and income for him. And I, and I think that's why I was so keen to have you on as a guest. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me uh, on, Colin. I really appreciate it. I love, I haven't done too many interviews myself, but um, I'm enjoying just the ability to share um, just some insight and, and just have a conversation about these kinds of things because I learn something as well uh, every time I have a, a conversation like this. And um, I'm just glad that you're um, able to have me on as a guest. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a really valuable chat and I'm sure the listeners will maybe have reinforced some things they already knew. We'll have learned some new things with regards to their style. And if you're still with us at this point, please pop a screenshot on your Instagram story. Tag Manny, tag myself. We can't wait for your feedback. And Manny, the last thing I'll ask you is where is the best place for people to connect with you? Yeah, you can connect with me. My main social media is Twitter. I'm at, uh, at WellBuiltStyle. Uh, website with the same name. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Uh, same at well built style. I'm not as active on that platform, but if you uh, want to get in touch with me, jump on Twitter and uh, you know, feel free to shoot me a DM if you have a style question or, or anything like that. And I'll be uh, happy to help you out. Fantastic. Hope everyone's enjoyed listening to that one. Please make sure you're sharing it on Instagram, share it with a friend that needs to dress better, even though he's got great biceps and I'll be back to speak to you all again. Very very soon.